Okay, our next speaker is Dick Batrick. He is the co-founder and director of programs, or was, well, he still is the co-founder, um, of Men Stopping Violence. Thank you, and thank you, Natasha. That was, that was really important. And I want to say hey, Atlanta, and hello to friends and allies, sisters and brothers. It is really great to be here. And one reason I'm here is because you invited me, but really the main reason I'm here is because men like me who are doing this work to end violence against women, we need to be in your space, women's space. We need to hear your voices. We need to hear the truth telling about men's oppression of women, the war on women that we conduct, and we need to hear the truth telling of your rising up of your breaking the silence and breaking the chains. One reason we need to do, be here is because, like, with our, with our mission, we're, we're uh, about going out and engaging men to stop the violence. How are we going to know if what we're doing makes any difference to you if we're not listening to you? So that's really a main reason I'm here. And the language counts, too. I want to say that this past week I was at a major conference at the Carter Center with women leaders from all over the world who were strategizing about how to, to work in solidarity with faith-based leaders. And during the course of that conference, we were talking about domestic violence, battering, rape, trafficking. And at one point, I noticed that the women were beginning to talk about torture. Eve Ensler says, you have to be able to name it if you're going to change it. And so I noticed that in the framing, raising it to the level of a meaning of truth, that this is about men torturing women, I will now, when I go out and engage with men and I'm talking about what are the things that we do and what are the effects of our violence against women, I'm going to begin to use the term torture because it does in some ways very accurately reflect what we do. One thing that happens, I think, when men move into women's space like this, we come into this, this room, this amazing room, I notice that women will, will thank us and appreciate us for being here. And that feels really good. But at the same time, I'm thinking, like, we got 2,000 years with men dissing and trashing women. So do we really need to thank us for what we're doing? I mean, it's, it's good, it feels good, but I'm wondering whether really what we need is um, your expectations, your expectations of us. Expectations are the precondition for accountability. So that when we go out to engage with men, really connect with men, we need to know from you whether, because it, it does profoundly affect with you, the messages we're sending to men affects you. And it's either going to work for you or it's not. But we need to know from you whether it's actually working, and that's accountability. Some of our trainings, in fact, most of our trainings, are about men addressing misogyny and women hating when it's in the room. And I want to talk about a training that took place about 20 years ago. We were training men over at the Existentialist Congregation over on, uh, in Candler Park. And so we're over there, and I'm noticing in the back row of our training, we're, we're going with the notion that men really need to listen to, to women's voices. In the back row is a very young but very big black man. And this guy's name is Mike Render. Mike is not saying very much during the whole day, but when he does speak, he speaks with striking clarity and wisdom. So fast forward. 20 years, three months ago. Um, Mike Render is about to take the stage at Masquerade, you know, the Performance Center on North Avenue. And I'm backstage because our son Sam is filming a documentary on music and, and food that's exploding in Atlanta. So I'm looking out there, Mike's going onto the stage. Oh, and it turns out that Mike, he's, he is the, the lead performer, but he's also now Killer Mike. And he is a rising star nationally and internationally. He is one of those guys you call the man. 
So I'm looking out there, and this room is packed, and it is electric and electrified. And Mike is taking the stage, and the place is going nuts. So I'm sort of watching this, and I have to say, I'm listening, but I can barely hear what's going on, but it wouldn't really matter that much because I really wouldn't understand a lot of what Mike's saying, right? You know what I'm talking about here? So I got about 30 years on most of the people in the room. Mike has got the place in a frenzy, and he finishes his first bit of, uh, his, first, his first song, and he requires the room to go silent. And he says, okay, I want to say something now, particularly to the men. I'm loving the energy in here. I'm just loving, loving the power and the energy in this room. But I want to say to the men in this room, it's great that we got the energy, but we cannot use this energy as an excuse to grope and grasp women while they're in this room with us. We need this room to be a safe space for women to get up and dance wildly and powerfully without them having to worry about whether they're going to be beat on or hit on by men. So that's really the end of that story. But what I want to say in terms of a take home, then just as now, men, we have just unending opportunities to stand up and say and do the right thing. It's just unfolding. And you know, with Mike, I don't even know whether somebody had done something right or wrong, and I don't think it matters. It didn't matter to him. He just knows enough to say, in this room, I want to say it needs to be right for women. It needs to be safe for women. Metaphoric for us as men. So the other part that I want to say just in, in, in finishing, I want to stress that in addition to that, I hope that women will continue to expect more of us, because I, I believe that we will do our best, our best to do the right thing and say the, say the right thing, and we need you to expect no less of us. So I'm going to invite the men in this room to rise up in solidarity with women, rise up with men, not only in, in this room, in Georgia, in this country, in the world. There are millions of men that are getting ready to be a part of this thing. So I thank you for being here. And men, can we rise up in this room? Rise up in solidarity with women.